So this might seem kind of irrelevant to the video title, but recently I got a Jordanville prayer book. This is something that the Russian Orthodox Church uses a lot. I highly recommend this. Uh, look into this. But interestingly enough, in this prayer book, um, a lot of the evening prayers that they have, uh, which I'll do every night, um, they will have specific requests that, Lord, grant me a dreamless sleep. Like, you don't want to have dreams while you're asleep. And I thought that was a little weird when I first read it. And I was like, well, why? What's so bad about dreams? I don't know. I just have inane liminal Bucky's core dreams. What's the problem with dreams? Well, the reality is, and this this is a narrative I've never heard in my life. I had never heard anyone uh, suspicious of them. And not just of dreams. Really, the Orthodox are more widely suspicious of all imagination. They're, su they're suspicious of any time where your mind is passive, when it is a target for, you know, demonic or, you know, carnal influences, any of that kind of stuff. And this actually makes a whole lot of sense, right? And I've come to, it's changed the way that I look at a whole bunch of things. Now, let, let's be specific about this. So firstly, um, let's just say dreams are part of a larger category called imagination. Okay, just maybe you have less control over dreams. I don't know. Uh, who, who cares? That's for another video, right? So in terms of imagination, imagination is actually where a lot of bad habits come from. So right off the bat, like everyone knows like, oh, like sexual fantasies, things like that. That, that comes from imagination, right? I've said actually before um, that I definitely think it's the case that when like teenagers or whatever, they start watching pornography. I don't actually think it's because they're just young and sexual and hormonal. I don't think that's the case. I actually think what causes mass consumption of pornography and stuff like this nowadays is because kids are freaking bored. They don't have any, they don't have anything in their time to do. Like they're, they're sitting unsupervised with a computer for like hours on end in a lot of cases, cell phones. Um, and so like that sometimes happens, not because initially these kids are looking for this kind of stuff, but because it just happens to them because, uh, you know, I can sit here and think about what I want. I can kind of be this passive uh, consumer of whatever happens to come to me, right? Um, and that actually is where I really think this kind of stuff comes from. Like people don't get into this abnormal sexual stuff um, just by living real life. They get into the stuff by being detached from real life and, you know, in this like weird imagination world of like uh, degenerate pornography and stuff like that, right? So that sexual stuff is a very obvious case of this. But I think it's also the case that imagination is like just really, when you really think about it, when you have time alone and you are letting your thoughts, your thoughts like control you, um, they lead you in like really bad ways. Uh, think about this like, um, you know, when you're thinking about other people, right? Um, that is the time when you really, like, you overanalyze people's personalities, um, you, you find faults in them, uh, it, it's like, a, it's a place for you to be prideful about yourself because you're comparing yourself to other people, and, you know, in real life, in a lot of cases, you're not, like, you're not going to reach those conclusions if you're in a constant rapport with different people, but if you... Uh, are in this imagination world, there are a lot of cases where you can kind of make these mosaic representations of people that aren't really, they, they might be 95% accurate, but that 5% accurate is always going to be uh, kind of, I don't know, against, it, it's always going to work in your favor. It's always going to be like arrogant or, or a prideful way of looking at people. Um, so I think it's really harmful, you know, gossip is a harmful thing, and even gossip with one person when you're like thinking about what people are doing. I think that's something that, that I, I don't know, I've tried to cut out and I think other people should as well. Um, but even more than that, even when it comes to like productive things, like this is where they really get you, right? Um, and again, like to the Orthodox, this is like when you're, when you're in a state of imagination and, or when you're like, uh, uh, when you can have all these kind of dreams and stuff, that is always you being kind of spiritually passive and you can be influenced by demonic forces or like just your carnal impulses, right? And you know, by your passions, you can be influenced by them a whole lot more easily than otherwise. But as I was going to say, like one of the worst kinds of, I don't know, one of the most counterintuitive things is that I think that a lot of times uh, if you have some productive goal, and you end up fantasizing about it too much, you will end up not doing it at all. <laughs> there comes a point, like, let's say you want to accomplish something, you want to do, I don't know, I, I shouldn't even provide a hypothetical, because I know for a fact that there's probably something in your life where you know, oh, this is, oh, I, this is what he's going to be talking about. But let's say you have some specific goal that you want to accomplish, 
And so you you plan it out, right? You you spend too much time planning it, and you start to enjoy that planning. You start to enjoy. You're really imat. You're you're thinking of all the scenarios that could happen. Um, and instead of actually acting on this, you you find so much pleasure in thinking about it that you don't like the pleasure of thinking about it becomes greater than the actual desire to do it, and you end up not doing it. And that's kind of an ironic thing, and that can happen uh, in a whole lot of domains, not just like productive things that you want to accomplish, um, but also social things. Like you can, uh, one thing, I think when I was younger, I used to do this a lot. I used to like act out uh, conversations with people in my head. I don't know, like uh, that, that's kind of a weird thing. I really don't do that anymore. I just kind of, I don't know, but maybe I do a little bit. Uh, but that's another thing, like people will imagine scenarios in their head and they'll forget that, oh, like the, it's not, the imagination is not the real part, right? I mean, the world, we are in a totally bizarre hyper reality. It's really a hypo reality because like this whole, all this internet stuff, it's like, it's it's fake. It's, it's not real. Um, and a lot of people seem to think that like their imagination or the, the internet is somehow realer because, oh, it's, people are living in imagination more and more often. But that is, that's not the case, right? So what I'm trying to get at is this, this just totally changed my perspective. It's just a little thing. And you, you can look up a lot of Orthodox people talk about imagination and, and dreams and why they're, you should always be suspicious. Um, and this is actually a big difference. I should add, this is a big difference between, uh, I guess, the, the Protestant upbringing that I got growing up, right? Because there's this sense where um, uh, like Protestants turn tend to, especially like lower church, we're talking about like Pentecostal people or, or something like that. They have a tendency to like divinize or, or like deify their own thoughts. Like, if, ooh, if this thought came to my head, it must be God, which is uh, incredibly wrong and incredibly blasphemous because most of the time the thoughts that come to your head, they're just inane or they're frankly just bad. And that's a suspicion that the Orthodox um, have of all this kind of stuff and kind of puts them on a, uh, a separate uh, ends of a spectrum. Uh, from a lot of this. So I think it's important to be suspicious of thoughts. And I will just say for purposes of my uh, YouTube, uh, you know, me putting up videos on the internet, I will say there's a sense in which um, uh, like you, I notoriously, and this is probably a bad thing, on occasions I will get annoyed by people on YouTube. I think that uh, realistically speaking, and I'm sure lots of you guys will agree with me, there are lots of people who watch this channel who are freaking weirdos. Uh, and uh, like the whole, I don't know, there are a lot of times I, I just get uncomfortable with like doing videos and stuff like that. But realistically speaking, in the same way, I can, I cannot let myself, my own emotions, my own, the things that pop into my head that are like, oh my goodness, this is so cringe. Uh, it's kind of bad for me to get let that get in the way of uh, me doing stuff, realistically speaking. Um, I know, like I, I think, uh, I try not to have a bad attitude on live streams when I like start cringing at something stupid that someone, and it's not most people, right? It's just like, oh my goodness, like this this guy is like falling for all this stuff. And you know, a lot of times we get angry at people for doing things that we used to do, right? Like that's the easiest thing in the world. So sometimes that happens to me. But either way, what I'm saying in, in this is that like your emotions are not necessarily a good guide to what is right and wrong. Um, what is right might actually be very emotionally painful to do. It might be miserable when you act through it. Um, and you can't take too much pleasure in just a, a, enjoying thoughts and following joyful thoughts and joyful thoughts. Um, because that's not good. Because you're going to be, again, you're going to be prideful. You're going to be lustful. You're going to be lazy. All that kind of stuff. So that's all I have to say. Uh, that's something I've I've learned in the past couple of weeks. See you guys next time.